Well, switch theory was something that I developed after whiteboarding a lot of different things, especially with students in college, but it was really a relational thing. And so in most relationships, we start off in a positive space, having positive thoughts, feelings, and behavior, and then something switches, something happens, often an unmet expectation that moves us to this negative space. And in all of our relationships, we go back and forth between this positive and negative space. And so I, I want to, you know, extinguish the myth that everyone on social media lives in a positive space all the time, or the people who we talk to, right? When sometimes we think we're the only one that is facing difficulty. And that's a common part of just all of our negative space. Like, oh, I've tried everything, nothing works, everybody else has it better, those types of things. But switch theory is this idea that we switch back and forth between this positive and negative space, but all of us want to get back toward that positive space. And so we pre provide some pathway back. And so some of it is very practical. Most of us know when you're a little hangry, food is a way back toward that positive space or if we're sleepy. But sometimes it gets really tricky. Tricky, especially whenever we start to feel anxious for a long time or depressed or if we're stuck in grief. And so for me, with that job that I lost, I actually hadn't developed switch theory back then. So it's fun to connect these dots. Yeah, like talk to yourself if you would have known it yeah. then, yeah. what would have happened. Yeah. But I, I definitely, I felt some of those things that you said as a mom at the playground, I felt like my identity was shaken. Like, I want to let people know I've never been fired before. I'm not one of those people. It was them. It was that place. And I kind of talk about that in the book. I'm like, please let me tell you the story so you'll understand it's not just me. And, and and, and I think that all of that comes back to that identity that we struggle with understanding how people might look at us and judge us. And we want to be seen as a person who's trying really hard. And so for me, I, I experienced an automatic shift to this negative space whenever my boss began accusing me of kissing my soon to be husband during work. And I'm like, no, no, that isn't what it was. You know, we were whispering to each other and I'm sorry, I think we were probably too close to one another. But as I experienced this, I, I remember walking out. My husband had a meeting right after me and I just like broke down, you know, automatic shift, negative space. I don't know what we're going to do. We're getting married in a couple of weeks. Maybe it was even the next week that we were getting married. But I don't know if they're about to fire you too. And so my husband at least had the warning like, go in there and have composure. And he, he didn't lose his job, which was a difficulty because we were working at the same place. It was a difficulty for me because I continued to feel that trigger of, uh, I have to still think about this place occasionally as my husband's sharing about it, but I would just feel kind of stuck in this negative space and would try to keep fighting, like praying, Lord, what is it that you wanted for me? And, and is this a part of your plan? Are you going to use it in, in spite of what it is? But just that process of fighting for a positive space and trying to switch back to the positive space doesn't come easily for any of us. So I just want to remind anyone who's listening that it's okay if you're a little stuck in a negative space. The first step is to pray. And through the research and such that I've talked about, talked with people, they often tell that it's harder to pray than they realized in that negative space. You know, if it's something that someone else did to you, yeah, we can pray about that. Lord, that was not fair. But I lost my job partly because of the way that I handled it. And I didn't just take it on the chin and say, I'm sorry, whenever they accused me of kissing. I was like, well, no, I didn't. And then that was argumentative. And then they just let me go. And it wasn't yelling and screaming or anything. But even in that, I didn't have the wisdom to navigate that situation and save my job. And so I felt shameful. I felt less than I felt like I wasn't good enough. And that shifted me to a negative space. And so I, I realized it's not just me that struggles to bring God into those shame moments, but a lot of people struggle with that. Sometimes I will think negative things about my husband. And if I recognize, oh, those are the same things I thought the last time I was in this negative space. It's like this file cabinet in my brain. <laughs> I'm back here again. And so if we remember, this is a pattern of behavior that I can learn about. I can lean in instead of leaning out. 
and that will help me fight for that positive space. So if we become intimately familiar with our positive and our negative space, we will be able to bring God glory in both spaces instead of only bringing glory to him in a place that kind of creates this hypocrisy or this inability to measure up on our worst day. And so we know that God sees our worst days and we know that he died for us even on our worst days, but he, he wants us to experience some things better than we do. 